Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, soon to be the People's Knife Dad, and it is time for the first episode of my Dishonored Let's Play. So before we jump into the game, I want to do what I always do in the first episode of a new Let's Play and talk about the way in which I'll be playing this game. Um, because there's always different ways to play every game I play, and I feel like it makes quite a difference in Dishonored, at least, to specify how you're intending to play through it. Um, the first thing I want to note is that I will be playing with limited quick saving and quick loading. I'm gonna quick save a lot in case I screw up and die, but I will refrain from quick loading unless I really screw up somehow. Uh, this is because by default when I play these kinds of games, I tend to play in a very perfectionist style. I tend to um, wait ages for things to happen, and then if I screw up, reload. It's not gonna be fun to watch me reload the same like 10 seconds over and over and over 20 times until I get it right. So um, I will be uh, committing to things. Whatever happens stays happened unless I really screw up or indeed die. Then my second point is that essentially I'm going to be playing with most of the UI options switched off. The thing about the game's UI is I think it's really cluttered. I think games like these should be immersive. I think that it's a lot more immersive if you switch the UI off. Dishonored, unlike a lot of these games, or in games in general, actually has a really wide array of options for um, toggling things on and off in the UI, which is a really nice touch, and it's such a nice quality of life feature to have been included. By default, you can see who can see you, you can see how close they are to becoming alerted, you can see whether or not you're crouching or standing based on a little marker in the corner of your vision. There are objective markers everywhere, there's pop-ups everywhere. It is really cluttered as a UI. I have almost all of those switched off. I, the only things I have switched on are my health and mana gauges, which should be set to contextual, which means they'll disappear if they're not relevant. Um, I also have the little text pop-ups that say what you're looking at. This is because essentially that's the only way to know what the names of objects are. And if you haven't played through this game before and you're watching my Let's Play, you might appreciate knowing that, ah, this is a this is a bottle of bath salts. That's a, a Tivian pear. This this may mean things, it may not mean things, but I'm sure you'll appreciate knowing because, frankly, I'm the kind of person who appreciates knowing. The other thing that I will leave switched on is... Uh, so there's an item in the game called the heart. When you use it, it highlights the magic items in the area that you can collect. When you don't have the objective markers for the heart switched on, it still shows you where those are with like red dots that you can see through the landscape. So. The only difference is that it's more noticeable if you have the heart markers switched on. You can still use the heart to spot where all, the, all of these things are, they just don't have big glowing arrows as well as the little red dots. I Essentially these are functionally the same, and also I want to make sure that I pick up all of the magic items as we play through the game, so I'm going to be leaving that one on. Which brings me to my next point, which is that I will be collecting all of the runes, all of the charms, all of the Sokolov paintings, and as much treasure as I can find. However, I am not actually going to scour the level for every individual coin that's lying around. Anyone who's played Dishonored knows that when you get to the end of the level you get a little score screen, and on that score screen you always find that despite the fact you thought you got every single treasure item in the level, you've actually missed about a thousand coins worth of treasure. So <laughs> this is because they... Um, it's really hard to find. There's a, just a ton of individual coins scattered around every level. They're in bird's nests, they're up drain pipes, they're in sewers, they're in people's pockets, they're in like super pots, they're everywhere, and it's really hard to find all of them. So as I go through the game, I'm gonna be exploring broadly. I'll be peeking in uh, every major area. I'll be looking at anything interesting. I'm gonna skip boring dead ends and uh, I'm gonna grab whatever treasure I see, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to go through the level three times finding every single loose coin because that's insane. So uh, finally, the other thing about the way I'll be playing is that I'm going to be... Did I mention this? Uh, there is a chaos system in the game, uh, which essentially means that the more violent your playstyle, the more you're seen, the more you kill people, and the more of the like evil narrative options you pick, uh, the worse the world becomes as you go through it, and then at the end of the game, the final chapter is very different depending on whether you're high chaos or low chaos. I'm going to be trying to play through low chaos, I'm going to refrain from killing unless it's absolutely necessary, but um, if I fuck up and kill people, I fuck up and kill people, that's what happens. Each of the major assassination targets has a non-lethal option of removing them from the world state, 
However, in those instances specifically, and I'll talk about them as they come up, I'm going to go with what I think Corvo will go with as a character. Because there are some of them that really don't make much sense, and um, based on who he is as a person, I think he would be doing what he thinks is best for Emily at any given time. If you haven't played this, you'll find out who these characters are later, but um, there are just times when I don't think he would choose the non-lethal option because it does not make sense within the narrative. Uh, so. That is how I'll be playing through this game, and we can start in just a moment. Before that, I finally want to mention that I will be always posting my Let's Plays for free. However, I do have a Patreon you can donate to if you want to. I also have a coffee if you would prefer a one-off donation to a ongoing donation. If you sign up to my Patreon, you get access to practice episodes um, and some behind-the-scenes stuff, along with some secret Let's Plays that I did, which I decided not to make full public, publicly published let's plays of but you know there's still a couple of secret let's plays that you can get access to that way but as i say even if no one donates i'll still be posting my main let's plays publicly it's just what i do so all of that aside let's finally dive into the game i'll be playing on hard rather than very hard for the simple reason that um like talking while you play is enough of a uh brain debuff that i get like 50 to 70 percent reduction in my player skill. So uh, if I play on the hardest difficulty and talk about it while I play, I will fuck up constantly. Whereas if I'm on uh, the merely hard difficulty, I, uh, I'll fuck up, but not constantly. Returning home. You have just returned from a journey of several months, visiting other nations in the Empire to ask for aid, dealing with the Rat Plague. You must deliver the diplomatic response to the Empress whom you serve as Lord Protector. Corvo, if only there was someone else I trusted to send, so that you could remain near. But there is no one else, and the Spymaster was right to insist that I send you. The plague has taken so many, and we must find a cure. When you are near, my heart is at peace. Emily and I will count the days until you return. Hurry home, and bring good news. Steady hand. That's it. Watch it. Cast off line. Casting off. We're away. Take us straight to Dunwall Tower. Lord Corvo has news for the Empress, and we've come a long way. A long way to bring bad news. The sailors say there's a curse on us. Black magic. Superstition. For all we know, there's a cure for the plague by now. Maybe. We live in strange times. Sending the Empress's bodyguard away for a couple of months. That's unusual. Well, this was important. We need help with the rat plague. I really like the naturalistic way this exposition is delivered. Most games tend to just include the monologue directly at you and tell the player what's going on, even though it makes no sense for people to just be, like, vomiting exposition at your face. Oh there! We're going up! Also, the sound design here is delightful. Um, the echoing of the space and the way the voices are distorted by the echoes is really well observed, more so than in a lot of games. The Empress will be waiting for your news, Corvo. This kind of speaks to immersive sim design um, as a rule, in that it is ultimately about the verisimilitude of an environment and an attempt to create a really Corvo, believable space. Waiting. You should go see the Empress. Yeah, all right. Don't hurry me. You know what to do next time? Yes, yes. The pressure was too low. All these new machines are touchy. Just don't like they're not the only ones that are touchy, huh? Sokolov's changed everything. Don't Hello, sir. You're back! Will you tell me about your trip, please? Were there any whales? Wait! Let's play hide and seek first. I'll cover my eyes and you hide. 
Do you have time? Mother's busy talking to that nasty old spy master. In all honesty, I don't know how anyone can say no to that. Okay, here we go. I think that the simple affection of a child is a really efficient way to get you invested in the narrative quite quickly. Let's go. We'll, Come on. we'll touch on that again later. Oh, that's precious. Um, I guess I could have talked about it now. I thought she would say more things. Let's see if you're still good at this. I'll hide my eyes and count, and at the end of the countdown, I'll try and find you. Okay, I'm going to count to ten. Find a place to hide! This is actually a really efficient tutorial for the stealth system in the game. It's such a neat, clever way of One, uh, just getting two, you to understand three, four, the basics five, of the stealth. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here I come! It's one of the only ways I've ever seen to actually have a tutorial not feel... Um, like it breaks the immersion. Even when you have a tutorial that a character is explaining how to do a thing to another character, it usually feels very contrived. But this feels quite naturalistic. I used to always hide at the top of that staircase, actually. Um, just because, like, I'm not going to let a kid beat me at hide and seek. I'm way too good at this. Okay, you win. We should go now. Of course, if you hide here, she never finds you. But there are a couple of hiding places she will find you in. I think she Wonder finds you if you hide behind here. Lessons? Someday I'm going to climb up to the rooftop. Oh, honey, sweetie, no, do not do that. If you fall and die off the roof, your mother will have me skinned. Did you see any monsters while traveling to the other aisles? My nanny says the big ocean's full of them, but I think she only says that to scare me. She runs fast for a little kid. Welcome home, Lord Protector. Stop moving, Campbell. And you, Corvo, welcome back. From wherever you've been. They sent him all around the Isles to beg for aid. A waste of time. My elixir will banish the plague from this city. Now keep still a moment, High Overseer Campbell. I'm not so sure that painting looks like Campbell. I saw my improvements to the waterlock. I do my duty for the realm, but not gladly. What are you doing? I need the bottle to draw the eye away from Campbell. I suppose I can paint him without the cider. Though in truth, he is always close to this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame you, really. I don't like looking at him either. Um, but what kind of genius Should painter begin. needs actually so needs once. it there. Like, you've painted the bottle already. Hey, Jeff. It's been good <clears throat> traveling with you, Corvo. Same. Uh, I actually never realized before that this is Jeff Kerno who shows up in the plot later. Uh, I thought this was just a generic captain. Have you ever met my niece, Callista? <coughs> She's getting more beautiful every year. They're sick people, not criminals. We've gone beyond that question, Your Majesty. They're, They're my citizens. And we will save them from the plague if we can. All of them. Very well. We will not speak of this again. Mother, Corvo is back. Thank you, Emily. Leave us, please. As you wish, Your Majesty. Corvo. Two days early. Full of surprises, as usual. I've never met a more untrustworthy sounding man. Think you'll get your own squad after what happened last night? Never doubt it. Follow me, Captain. We should leave them alone. How questionable. It's a fair wind that brings you home to me. What news have you brought? Awful news. The the worst news? Just absolute dog shit news. Uh sorry. Sorry, Your Majesty. I hope that one of the other cities had dealt with this before, knew of some cure. This news is very bad. We're at the breaking point. Cowards. They're going to blockade us. They'll wait to see if the plague turns the city into a graveyard. 
Are you okay, Mother? You seem sad. Yes, don't worry, darling. Mother is fine. Wait, where are the guards? Who sent them away? Mother, look! What are they doing on the rooftop? What? Emily, come here! And here is your first opportunity to go absolutely sick house on some guys. Corvo, thank you. If you hadn't been here... No more! Not again! Mommy! No! Get away from her! Corvo! Oh, oh, mommy! Oh. Get away! Corvo! That's gonna leave some trauma. Corvo... It's all coming apart. Fine. Find Emily. Protect her. You're the only one who'll know what to do. Won't you? Corvo. Ward us all. Look at what he's done. Yes, he's killed the Empress. What did you do with young lady Emily, traitor? Her own bodyguard. Ironic. I'll see you beheaded for this, Corvo. Take him. There's something I actually love about that cutscene, which is that um, it's so clear that Burroughs is actually improvising there. Which I really like, but it's also amusing that Campbell seems genuinely confused and surprised, like he wasn't involved with the plot. As becomes clear throughout the rest of the game, he's involved in this plot, but it seems like he genuinely thinks Corvo just arbitrarily killed the Empress for no reason here. Either he's a way better actor than Burroughs is, or he is genuinely confused and Burroughs um, improvises off his confusion because it's convenient to blame Corvo. Dishonored. Six months have passed since you were accused by the royal spymaster of murdering the Empress and conspiring to abduct her daughter, Emily, the royal heir. Now locked away in Coldridge Prison, the time of your execution draws near. This is your final chance, Corvo. Sign the confession, and let me give you the rights to put your spirit at ease. That's enough for now. Get out. Let's give the man some time to think. Corvo, the Empress is dead. Her daughter Emily is hidden away, and no one will ever know the truth. Yes, unlucky you. Tomorrow you'll be executed, but it's for a good cause. This country needs strong leadership now, someone to guide the weak. And that's where we come in. There was nothing personal in this, even though you almost sank our plans. But it turned out well. You were in the wrong place at the right time. And someone has to take the fall. Goodbye. Corvo. Guards! Take him back to his cell. You should eat, Corvo. This meal comes from a friend. Well, isn't that a hell of a thing? kind of concerned that the implication therefore is that um, all of the rest of my meals while I've been in here have been coming from an enemy. Um, I don't know a lot about prison life, but I think that if you make an enemy of the chef, that's a bad idea. So um, that's going to be the end of today's episode in, well, in just a second. One thing I want to mention before that is that this space out here is actually the execution area. I, as far as I know, it's inaccessible in this level. It's just a really nice detail that you do have this view from your window of a space that exists. And um, in the DLC for this game, you can actually revisit this area and uh, get to explore that zone. So it's interesting that they have put that level of detail in 
um, even with no intention ever to actually use it or have you access that area. That speaks to the kind of intentionality of design with which every little aspect of Dishonored is considered. So, uh, yeah, join me next time for a thrilling prison escape, um, or ideally a quiet prison escape that nobody sees and I don't have to murder 15 people. So yeah, that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.